Yeah, welcome to the Diffy Q Jungle. Here we go. Uh, we're going to look at some real world uh, problems today. And as uh, we're going to take a look and see how these Diffy Qs relate to growth and decay problems that we could commonly encounter in the real world ourselves. Um, basically, uh, I want you to get in the habit of visualizing either an exponential growth type of equation or one that has uh, exponential decay to it. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. We're going to take a look at a very famous Diffie Q and, and talk about how we're going to solve it. So believe it or not, here's a, here's a sentence that uh, is uh, very, very uh, real in our daily lives. And it says that the, the rate of change of some variable, we'll call it Y for now, is proportional to the, actual, to the present amount or the value of Y. And just as a little side note here, Y is a function of T. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to take this very, very famous sentence and translate it into a mathematical equation. And so the, the moment you saw the word rate here, hopefully you're, you got a little excited. We knew we were going to do some calculus here. So it's the rate of change of y, and I'm going to simply say dy dt is, is my equal sign, proportional to who? To the value of y. So we're going to say here's my proportional to the value of y. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the most famous differential equation. Um, and, and we're going to talk about what his general solution looks like and how we're going to relate it to a lot of common phenomena. Uh, for instance, it's very pop, uh, very popular to say that a, a population of a certain town or a certain region is growing at a rate proportional to the current population. Um, in, in other words, I kind of like to paraphrase it like this down here in this little box at the bottom. It says basically something is increasing or decreasing at a rate proportional to the current amount present. Um, very, very similar to this sentence, just worded a little differently. Okay, we're going to take our very famous Diffie Q that we just wrote, dy dt. That stands for the rate at which y is changing, is proportional to the amount present. Um, as far as solving this, uh, we're going to agree that k is a constant, okay, uh, which helps us considerably. y is our dependent variable, just like it always is. And in this case, t is our independent variable, taking the place of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say dy divided by y is equal to k times dt. There's the separation of the variables that we've been preaching for uh, during last week. Now we're ready to go ahead and, and, and actually integrate both sides now. Um, we're seeing something very famous on the left side. The antiderivative of dy over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And that's equal to k times t plus c. To go ahead and, and try to kill the natural log, what we're going to do is we're going to take the base e of each side. So there's e raised to the left side and then e raised to the right side. Uh, I can't stress this enough. We, we have to take e and raise it to the entire side. Um, we can't take the base e of each individual term uh, like we might want to. So anyway, we we got the zap rule there. We've got the absolute value of y is equal to, and I'm going to use a little decomposition here. We're going to say e raised to the kt times e raised to the c. Hopefully we're feeling more comfortable with that decomposition. Uh, let's see if I can slide the screen a little bit here. All right. Um, now we're going to say that y is equal to, we're going to say that e raised to the c is just some new constant here e raised to the kt power. Um, basically, what we were, we were preaching earlier is that when we took these absolute values away, that created a plus or minus on this right side. But basically, we're going to say that that plus or minus sign gets absorbed by the constant. The constant itself will decide whether he wants to be positive or negative once we plug in our initial conditions and so forth. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is what we would consider the general solution of the very famous Diffie Q that we wrote down on the previous slide. Okay, now I, tried, I just want to try to summarize some of the key ideas that we just went through. We, we saw a sentence and we translated it into a Diffie Q that said dy dt is proportional to the amount present. And we said when we solved that Diffie Q, we got the general solution y equals c e 
to the KT. In fact, uh, this Diffie Q is going to be so prevalent and so famous that once you write this Diffie Q on your paper, you do not need to show me the steps of solving this Diffie Q anymore like we just did in our notes. Um, you can instantly go from this Diffie Q to this solution. Um, you don't have to show me separation of the variables. You don't have to show me your integration. It's just an instantaneous move that we'll all agree on. Uh, a couple of the key components here. When the C is equivalent to your initial amount every time. In fact, we could prove that that's always true because um, when we say initial, we're referring to the fact that t equals zero. It's what you began with when time was zero. And if you substitute that zero in for t up there, uh, e to the zero power is a one, and you'll just end up with y equals c. So c always represents your initial amount. K is kind of the, the fancy rascal here. We call that your constant of proportionality or your proportionality constant. Um, let's see if spelling that's a challenge in itself. Um, the proportionality constant, and more specifically, and perhaps you could probably you could probably fill in the blanks here. If k is greater than, um, if k is positive, if k is greater than zero, what must be true? It turns into a growth type of model. Whereas if k is negative or less than zero, then it becomes a decaying model. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of both of those today. Yeah, perhaps you've heard Bailey barking there a little while ago. I, I think we got him calmed down, but he sees a couple squirrels out on the front lawn, and he's been a little overly excited this morning. Um, but anyway, try, uh, hopefully he won't make too much more noise. Uh, what I want to do here is I just want to practice translating some sentences into a mathematical equation here. Uh, our first one says that the rate of change of m, and as soon as I saw that, I instantly wrote dm over dt. We're going to assume that these are all with respect to time. Um, is, there's my equal sign, proportional, there's my k, proportional to what? We would say the entire quantity m minus 36. Um, perhaps some of you remember the, the question on our last Grizzly, and it talked about um, this rumor spreading, and uh, the rumor was spreading at a rate proportional to blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember exactly what it was proportional to, but it's a very similar to this type of question right here, and, and in fact, I, I uh, applaud several of you for, for attempting and getting that problem right, even though we haven't officially covered this topic. Um, number two, I got just a little bear trap waiting for you here. Uh, we're, we're talking about the rate of change of Q. So there's my dQ dt um, with respect to time is, here's the bear trap, inversely proportional. So basically, instead of multiplying by k, we're going to end up, uh, it's going to be k divided by this quantity. Um, back in, when you guys were in Algebra 2, when we first introduced the idea of inverse proportions, we said the general form was y equals k divided by x. That was the general form of an inverse variation. So all we're going to say here is this is k divided by, and in this case, it's the cube, not the cubed root, but the cubed of q. So we're going to say q raised to the third power, and that would be our mathematical problem. Okay, we're now finally ready to roll up our sleeves and actually get into an entire problem, not just translating it mathematically, but also attempting to solve it given specific values. Um, you know, as far as writing out this equa uh, this whole pro word problem, I, you know, it's easy to, to get lazy here and, and just jot down one or two things, but I think it's really going to pay off in the long run if you write out the entire problem that's been given to us. Again, don't be afraid to hit the pause button and take as much time as you need. But uh, just reading that first sentence, they talked about the, the rate of change of y being um, proportional to y. So there's our Diffie Q, dy dt equals k times y. We know that the solution to that Diffie Q is guaranteed to be y equals c e to the kt. And, and that's that move I talked about. You don't have to show me how you got to that solution. We all agree that we, we uh, can go right to that move. Now the next thing I noticed was that at t equals 0, the y value is 2. That's what I'm going to call my um, initial condition in this case. Uh, so we know that our c value here is guaranteed to be 2. If you're not comfortable with that yet, you could certainly you could substitute the, the 0 in for t, the 2 in for y, and, and then go ahead and actually solve it for c. Um, but I think you could probably visualize that all happening. 
So now I only have one unknown constant. Just a second ago, I had two unknown constants. I didn't know the C value. I didn't know the K value. Well, we've, we've crossed one off our list. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of this point right here. I'm going to substitute the 2 in for T in the Y, or the 4 in for Y, and then hopefully we can solve for K. So let's see, what, what would that look like? We've got 4 is equal to 2 times E raised to the 2K power, substituting the 2 for T there. I'm going to divide the 2 over. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides and then divide by 2. So I've got 1 half the natural log of 2 equals k. In fact, we could get a little fancier and say that k is uh, the natural log of radical 2, just using our natural log properties to, to move that coefficient into the exponent. So, there, so we've now solved for our second um, unknown. Now what I can do is we're going to go ahead and, and um, write our particular solution here. So our particular solution says that y is equal to 2 times e raised to the natural log of radical 2 t power. The last thing they wanted me to try to figure out was what's the value of y at the moment when t equals 3. And all we're going to do is we're going to substitute our 3 into here. So it's going to be 3 natural log of radical 2. We crunch that out a little bit. We're, we're more than welcome to throw that into our calculator right now. Uh, but I'm content with leaving it in terms of, well, could we get a little fancier here maybe and simplify it? Yeah, I think we could uh, rewrite this as, whoops, it's sliding all over here. Um, we could rewrite that as 2e to the ln of, let's see, 2 to the, what would that be, 3 halves power maybe. Use our zap rule. Um, we've got y equals 2 times 2 to the 3 halves, which is equal to 2 to the 5 halves. You know, something like that, depending on, you know, it's going to be a multiple choice question probably, and they, they might decide to stop back here. They might take it a little further. They might say radical 2 to the 5th power. They might say radical 32, you know, all sorts of things. And we could maybe go as far as 4 radical 2 by the time we get it all simplified. But it all depends on the multiple choice question. All right, I got one more rascal for you. It's a little uglier. We'll see if we can sort it out. Okay, here it goes. Uh, looks like a very overwhelming problem, but uh, we'll just take a sentence, one sentence at a time. It says the rate of radioactive decay is proportional to the amount present. <clears throat> Now, if you kind of sneak ahead in the second sentence, you'll notice we're going to be talking about plutonium. So I'm going to let capital P represent, represent the amount of plutonium I currently have. And so my diffy Q there, based off of that first sentence here, the rate, we'd say dP, dt, so the rate of plutonium is proportional to the amount of plutonium we have. And of course, the solution to that diffy Q, we're going to say P equals CE to the KT power. So here, in that second sentence, it says, suppose that 10 grams of plutonium isotope with a half-life of 24,100 years was released in the Chernobyl nuclear accident. How long will it take for the 10 grams to decay to just one gram? So what you'll notice here is that basically, and that's right here, they're saying when T equals zero, P equals 10. So that's my initial amount, and that's going to represent that 10 is going to be my C value. And most of the time, it's, they do give you that initial amount where you can just instantly plug a number in for C. That's very, very common. The next thing we notice is this half-life thing. It's probably, probably some of you feel very comfortable talking about half-lives and others are a little uh, less comfortable. Basically, it means um, half of the 10 grams will be there 24,100 years from now. So basically, when... Um, when T equals 24,100, then P will equal 5. And that's what I'm going to try to substitute in right now. Let's see, 24,100 times K. So we're going to see if we can solve for K. Very similar to the procedure we used in the last problem. We're going to divide the 10 over. Um, then we're going to try to take the natural log of both sides. So we've got uh, the natural log of 1 half equals 24,100 times K. Divide the 24,100 over, and we are definitely going to throw this 
quantity into our calculator and, and try to store that. Now, I ended up getting something obnoxious. I ended up getting k equals negative point zero 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 maybe two eight seven six one so hopefully you can verify that on your calculator and what I would do if this happened to be a free response question is I would then just draw an arrow indicating that I have stored that value in you know something like alpha a I've shown as many decimals as my calculator uh, presented me with and I'm just communicating to the person grading my exam that I've stored that number uh, with all its decimal values the only trick now is that we're not quite done. They wanted, they asked me how long will it take for that 10 grams to decay down to, to 1 gram. So I could now say, well, first of all, my, my particular solution looks like this now. Well, um, whoops, don't want to use Y. That should be a P. P equals 10, E to the A times T power, where A represents my stored value right here. And so I could substitute the 1 for P. And now we're just going to use our, our algebraic skills to solve for t. We'll divide the 10 over. We'll take the natural log of both sides. It's been a very common theme today. And then we'll divide both sides by alpha a. And again, we're going to use a lot of calculator, and whatever that turns out to be on the calculator will end up being our answer. Um, looks like maybe it's turning out to be about 80,000. Oof. Um, and 59 years for that 10 grams to decay down to just one gram. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a very famous Diffie-Q. Uh, a certain variable is increasing or decreasing at a rate proportional to itself. And, uh, and this is a, you know, a type of Diffie-Q that we're certainly going to encourage you to memorize and, and just help us be a little quicker and more efficient on our exams. So good luck, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow in class.